then of course it might be worthwhile to be adding up our medical expenses to make sure that we're getting our maximum benefit. Once we start thinking about what kind of medical expenses qualify, you can imagine people getting quite creative and they have gotten quite creative in the past and you can get into the weeds in this area. And this is one of those areas where you could look at the law and say there's not enough definition in some areas and then you might have even have to go down to court cases and revenue rulings and whatnot. Because you can imagine a doctor saying that basically anything is deductible. You can get a doctor to say anything. After, after COVID and watching Fauci out there calling himself science incarnate and whatnot, you, you start to lose faith that they're actually following the science, right? So, I mean, like if, if, if a doctor said you could, you could deduct a vacation to Hawaii for medical expenses, is that going to be deductible? You know, you could you could probably say, no, that's not going to be deductible. But those are the, if I bought a jacuzzi or a sauna for my home, is that going to be deductible? Because my doctor said it was going to be something you can imagine all kinds of these kind of uh, scenarios that are somewhat in the gray area. And and then you, you might have to get into more detail about them. But certain things are not in the gray area and are pretty straightforward. So to the extent uh, you weren't reimbursed in calculating your total medical expenses, you can include what you paid for. Now, obviously, if you were reimbursed for the medical expenses, then you didn't actually pay them. And you would think then that they would not be something that would be deductible. Insurance premiums for medical and dental care, including premiums for qualified long-term care insurance contracts as defined in publication 502, but see limit on long-term care premiums you can deduct later. Reduce the insurance premiums by any self-employed health insurance deduction you claim on Schedule 1. So obviously the big cost for many people is the insurance. And so can we deduct the insurance? Now, if you can deduct the insurance, sometimes you end up with this double dipping kind of problem. And this is another kind of issue that comes up in part because we're kind of veering away from that standard thing that you would think would naturally be deductible if you have an income tax system. In other words, normally if you have an income tax system, you're going to deduct the things that you needed to expend in order to generate the revenue as we see kind of, for example, on a Schedule C, where we deduct the expenses that we needed to generate the revenue. Uh, all the stuff on the Schedule A, such as medical expenses, notice that's personal. We didn't, we didn't, it's not part of a business expense generally for medical expenses. So when we deduct the medical expenses, uh, it's kind of the rationale is something like we want to incentivize people to take care of themselves or nudge people to do this or that. And you end up running into situations oftentimes where the tax code has come up with multiple areas where you might be able to deduct something. So it used to be that insurance was tied to employment, right? So it might be something that was deduct that was was done through your place of employment as an employee. For a sole proprietor, then it might be possible for you to deduct the insurance possibly not on a Schedule C, but rather on the Schedule 1. And if you can deduct the insurance there, you can't also deduct it, you would think, on the Schedule A, because that would be what we would call like double dipping, two deductions for the same cost uh, in, in that case. So there's that. That would come up if someone was possibly self-employed, uh, for example, and that was their primary income, and they weren't receiving health insurance through a W-2 employee, for example. So you can't include insurance premiums paid by making a pre-tax uh, reduction to your employee compensation because these amounts are already excluded from your income by not being included in box one of forms W-2. So if you're a W-2 employee and you get insured through your employer and it's something that is not then taxable, it will already have been taken care of. You've already got a tax benefit because the employer will have reduced box one of the W-2 form, which is your income line. And therefore, it's already been taken care of. And because the box one will be reduced, box one of your income line might therefore be different than box three and five of your W-2, which are all wages, depending on whether it be subject to Social Security and Medicare uh, uh, tax.
So you have to be careful of that. Was it already excluded from income on the W-2? If so, then if you deducted it again, you would basically be double dipping. If you are a retired public safety officer, you can't include any premiums you paid to the extent they were paid for with a tax-free distribution from your retirement plan. Uh, prescription medicines or insulin. So there's the other big one. You've got the prescription medications that might be a deductible item clearly, which you might have to basically keep track of, of course, to see how much was paid for those items. Then we have uh, acupuncturists, uh, chiropractors, dentists, eye doctors, medical doctors, uh, occupational therapists, uh, osteoprothic doctors, <laughs> uh, uh, physical therapists, pediatrists, uh, psychiatrists, uh, psychoanalysts. So notice many of these categories, like for example, uh, acupuncturists and chiropractors are, were somewhat new into the field. So, so there have been questions in the past in terms of how broad a range of professionals would, would be qualified in this area. And again, this comes up, this ends up making a whole uh, issue because now it becomes important to define certain things as medical care. And it also could be important to define certain things as diseases and whatnot, not because that would be the de best definition possibly of certain things, but because uh, there's tax consequences related to it, which again, to me is kind of a, a detrimental outcome uh, because again, I, I don't want things to be defined as by whether it be uh, best for deductibility on a tax code and whatnot. Uh, I'd rather it be defined on other objective matters. <laughs> but in any case, medical examinations, x-ray and laboratory services, and insulin treatment for, for doctor-ordered uh, diagnostic tests, such as full body scan, pregnancy test, or blood sugar test kit, nursing help, uh, including uh, your share of the uh, employment tax paid. If you paid someone to do both nursing and housework, you can deduct only the cost of the nursing help. So if they're doing you know, the nursing work, then you might be paying them uh, directly and they're also doing housekeeper work, then obviously the housekeeper is personal information and the medical is also personal, but possibly deductible because of the Schedule A deduction. Hospital care, including meals and lodging, uh, clinic costs and lab fees, qualified long-term care services, which you can see publication 5024, the supplemental part of medical insurance, uh, Medicare Part B, and then the premiums you pay for Medicare Part D insurance, a program to stop smoking and for prescription medicines to alleviate uh, nicotine withdrawal, Again, this is another one that's kind of on those fringe cases where you're deducting this kind of stuff, which is like, is that really? I'm not sure. That's kind of like a habit, like a disease. Is it a disease? Addiction disease? Is obesity a disease or is it, you know, should it be categorized? I don't know. So a weight loss program as treatment for a specific disease, including obesity. So here's the one where they included obesity uh, as a disease. Is that a good thing to do if they did it just for taxes? Because if you tell someone they have a disease that could make their mental state a little bit different than telling them that they have a condition that that is that, you know, they, they have more control over maybe if it's not categorized as a disease. I would think. But anyway, medical treatment at a center for drug or alcohol addiction, uh, medical aids such as eyeglasses, contact lenses, hearing aids, braces, crutches, wheelchairs, and guide dogs, including the cost of maintaining them. I want a dog. I don't think it could qualify. Searching to improve defective vision, surgery to improve defective vision, such as laser eye surgery and uh, radial carotene. I need that laser eye surgery. 